In this video, we will talk about what a limit is. All right, so I want to motivate this with an example. Let's let f of x be the function x to the third minus 8 over x minus 2. So notice that if we plug 2 into the function, we end up with 2 cubed, which is 8 minus 8, so 0 on the top, and then 2 minus 2, which is 0 on the bottom. And anytime we divide by 0, our expression is undefined. So this is undefined. So the question I want to ask now is what happens? What happens to our function f of x? What happens to the outputs of our function, which are the y values? What happens to the outputs or the y values of our function? That's what f of x means. As x, as the inputs, gets closer and closer to 2. So we know that right at 2, the function is undefined. But maybe as x gets closer and closer to 2, it's going to approach a number. So I want to introduce some notation that we'll use to talk about this idea of letting x get closer and closer to a number. And I write it as lim, which stands for limit. Underneath the lim, I write x. I put an arrow, and then the number that x is getting close to, which is 2 here. And then next to the limit, I write my function. So the way I say this in words is the limit. Whoops, let's write that better. The limit of our function f of x as x approaches as x approaches 2. Alrighty, so there, there are three ways to evaluate this that I want to mention. So three ways to evaluate this. So the first is what's called numerically. I can evaluate a limit what happens is x gets really, really close to 2 numerically. And numerically means we plug in numbers. We plug in numbers into our function. In this case, numbers that are closer and closer to 2. And if I do that, I'll have an estimate on what the outputs are getting super, super close to. It won't be perfect. I, I can't be absolutely sure it's right, but I'll have an estimate. And we talked about things like this back in the previous section, 2.1, using a table of values and getting a smaller and smaller interval. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I'm going to skip doing it this way. And I want to focus instead on the next way, which is graphically. So if I know what the graph of my function looks like, I can use that. And that's going to be the heart of what we talk about in this section, 2.2. The third way is algebraically. And algebraically means to do some sort of algebraic simplification so that I am able to plug in my number somehow. And we'll see how to do that in section 23 all right, so in this, in this section, sorry, we're going to focus on how to do it graphically. So I'm going to go ahead and graph. I'm going to give the graph of this function, f of x, remember, is x to the third minus 8 over x minus 2. Okay, so I'm going to draw some axes. I'm going to draw some axes. I'm going to draw some tick marks. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, positive 1 and positive 2. And it turns out this function, this graph, looks like a parabola, parabola-ish. And the vertex of it happens to be at negative 1, 3. And then it sort of curves upwards like this, and it curves upwards like this. I can't actually plug 2 into the graph, because when I plug 2 in, it ended up being undefined. And graphically, the way that it, that's going to show up in this graph is that there's going to be a hole. The y-coordinate of the hole ends up being 12. 
So there is a hole at the point 2 comma 12. And then the graph continues upward. So it's a parabola with a hole at 2 comma 12. And so by looking at this graph right now, if I were to ask, well, what is the limit as x approaches 2 of my function? What that's asking is as the x values get super, super close to 2, so as x values get super, super close to 2 on my function, I'm getting really, really close over here. Or from the other side, I would be going like this, getting really, really close to where x is 2. The outputs of my function or the y value seem to be getting really close to 12. So I would say that this limit equals 12. So don't worry too much about like how did I get this exact graph. What I care most that you understand is once I have the graph, how do I know what the limit is by looking at it? To actually get this specific graph, I, have, I would need to simplify this function a little bit algebraically. And that's going to be something that we talk more about in section 2.3. All right, so to end this video, we're ready to give the definition of a limit. So we are going to say that the limit of our function f of x as x approaches a equals some number l. And the way we'll write that is I'll write lim underneath that x arrow to a. So as x approaches a of our function f of x equals l. So that's how we'll write it. That happens if, as x gets closer and closer to a, but not equal to a. That's important, so we don't care about what's happening exactly at a, just what's happening as x gets super, super close to it. f of x, or the outputs, the y values, f of x, or the y values, needs to get closer and closer to this number l. And l must be a single finite number. So there can't be more than one value that it's approaching, and it's got to be a finite value that it's approaching. If on the other hand, f of x does not approach just one finite number as x approaches a, so this arrow, the way I read that is x approaches, x approaches a, then we say that our limit as x approaches a of f of x does not exist does not exist. And we'll abbreviate that by writing D and E. And in the next video, we'll look at some pictures of wh wh what does it look like if my limit does not exist.